Hey, hey guys, welcome to another video. And in this one, I'm going to teach you how can you make the best comic card set for PvE, PvP, or both, even as a beginner or a free to play player. But this guide will also be aimed towards intermediate players and even veteran players. So, there are a few things you need to understand about comic card stats. The first one is that the two most important stats to cap are your ignore defense and cooldown. You should aim for at least 33% cooldown and at least 36% ignore defense. The reason why we're going for these, these amounts is because the cap for both cooldown and ignore defense is 50% and you get 14% extra cooldown from your alliance bonus and if you add that 14% to the 33%, you get to 47% and the rest you can cap with your Urus. And for Ignore Defense, we're going for 36% on your cards. And then you get an additional 8.1% from your ISO 8 set bonus going to combined to 44.1% Ignore Defense. And then the rest you can cap by rolling it either on your port gear option or with your urus now if you have a choice between capping one of these stats and leaving the other undercapped is go always the decision you should make is always go to cap ignore defense first and the reason is that the only ways you can get ignore defense is via the comic cards or the and the iso set as well as the uh, fourth gear option while cooldown you can get from all these options as well as your swords so you can roll cooldown on your swords as well like you can see here and that's the reason why you should prioritize capping your ignore defense here first after you cap both of these go for as many offensive stats as possible focusing on all basic attacks energy attack and physical attack as many attack speed crit rated crit damage before moving on and going for as many max hp all basic defenses and dodge stats which will help you in both pve and pvp so how can you achieve this as a free to play beginner or intermediate player i'm going to show you right now first we're going to start from what are the best beginner cards you should go for to achieve the desired number of ignore defense and cooldown as well as going for as many offensive stats as possible and first we're going to start with this card the loki card which is absolutely amazing free to play card that you can get easily from pretty much every single piece of content that drops comic cards this card is especially amazing because for fixed stats so the first two stats highlighted in color red it has fixed all attack and fixed cooldown reduction so these stats the amount that they give you vary depending on the quality of the card which can be rolled from one to seven and if you roll a medium rolled card so let's say four of a quality you'll get nine percent all attack and nine percent cooldown same goes if you go then one quality higher so quality five it will give you 9.5 percent all attack and cooldown at quality level six it will give you 10 percent all attack and cooldown and then at quality seven it would give you 11 percent all attack and cooldown and this is the reason why i say that you should always go for at least four of the quality because you get nine percent of those two fixed stats the other four stats always give you the exact same amount so first if the stat you rolled is on the first star it gives you 5.1 percent of the stat you rolled on the second it gives you 5.4 percent on the third 5.7 percent and then finally on the fourth one it gives you six percent so those are the fixed stats this card always has and you should always go for the for quality and for the random stats on this card you should go for the ignore defense that it can roll on the first viable stat or the variable stat and on the sixth slot you ideally want to roll the or the fourth blue slot you want to roll either energy or physical attack so this card is pretty realistic to be rolled because you only are looking for four quality and you want to ignore defense 
on the first stat, and you want energy or physical attack on the fourth stat. For the next card, we have Groot. This card is also amazing because it has Ignore Defense, the stat that we really want as a free-to-play beginner player. And it also has some crit damage as a fixed stat, which is not bad. For, from the stats that you can roll, you should always go for the cooldown on the second slot, and then always go for all attack in the final slot or the fourth blue slot. So if you roll this card at 4 quality, it will give you 9% ignore defense, 9% crit damage, it will give you 5.4% cooldown reduction, and it will give you 6% all attack. For the third card, you really want to go for Star-Lord, and this card is similar to the Groot card, because it also has ignore defense as a fixed stat, and for the second fixed stat, the red stat, it has crit rate. Again, if you roll it at the fourth quality, it will have 9%, it will give you 9% crit rate and an additional 9% ignore defense. From the blue stats, the stats that randomly roll when you to re-roll the cards, you want to go again for the cooldown on the second st stat, so 5.4% cooldown and 6% all attack from the final slot. For the final two cards, you want first to go for this Doctor Strange card that every new player gains for free as a seven day log login bonus and this card is amazing because it has cooldown in as a fixed stat so if you roll it for quality it will give you nine percent cooldown and it also has pierce on it and it's always 1.5 percent so this is an insanely good card for new players because it gives you that pierce 1.5%, which normally you need to roll or craft your cards, which we'll talk about later, to get that first 2% pierce, and this card just has pierce as a fixed stat, so 1.5%. For the random stats that you roll, you want to roll Ignore Defense on the first star, and then on the final one, you also want to roll All, all Attack. For the fifth card you want to go, as a beginner player is of course the second doctor strange card that you get for free once you log in seven days in a row and this card is really similar to the previous doctor strange card it also gives you 1.5 percent pierce so combined with the previous doctor strange card it gives you three percent pierce in total but instead of cooldown the fixed stat is ignore defense for the variable stats it can roll so the blue ones you want to go for the all attack on the first one and cooldown on the second one. Now, if we combine the stats of these cards I just showed you, assuming they're all four quality and you roll them exactly as I told you, you will end up with 32.1% all attack, 37.2% ignore defense, 34.2% cooldown, 3% pierce, crit damage, and critical rate. 9% each. So these stats are absolutely amazing for a free-to-play. Like, look at this. Captain Ignore Defense, Captain Gul'dan, and 32.1% all attack. I also haven't included the six star, this, the final roll from the Loki card, which is 6% energy or physical attack, because I didn't want it to get confusing here that you get an additional 6% both energy and physical attack. So you get either energy or physical attack once you roll this. So rolling these four cards, these five cards at four quality, and rolling them with the stats that I showed you, so only two stats at each card that you're looking for, shouldn't be that much of a problem, even as a beginner player, because you can craft your mythic cards by using X-Men tier two materials, so Phoenix Feathers and Amcron Crystals in the craft shop and use those mythic cards to re-roll these cards and get amazing stats as seen here. Now, if for whatever reason you are already an intermediate player and you cannot get Doctor Strange cards because you started playing before Netmarble introduced the login events which give you these two Doctor Strange cards, I will have a solution for you as well. But first, let's see what will happen if you roll an additional stats on these cards highlighted in color green. So this is the absolute best set you can have from these stats. So if you 
You should always you always get the red stats because they're fixed. You should always roll the blue stats because they are most valuable for your account. And as you can see here, if you roll only the blue stats I showed you here, you get insane amount of all attack, capped ignore defense, capped cooldown, as well as some pierce and crit rate, crit damage. But if you roll all these additional stats, which I call I like to call optional stats, your stats will be even more insane. So if you we now combine both the red stats, which are fixed, and the blue stats, which you should roll, and the green stats, which are optional roll, and if you get them, that's really cool, your combined stats will look like this. We are looking at, again, 32.1% all attack, capped ignore defense with 37.2%, 34.2% cooldown reduction, so capped again. 3% pierce damage, which is amazing. 9% critical damage plus 5.7%, so we're looking close to 15% critical damage. Crit rate stays the same, but then we get almost 11% energy attack, over 11% physical attack, 17.1% all defense, 20% chance to increase or 5% chance to increase your all attacks by 20% and the same proc which increases your physical attack by 20%. So even without premium cards, like any premium card, if you roll your cards like this, this is what your stats will look like and this is absolutely amazing card set. And with this, you can easily clear any world boss legend if you follow and build your characters properly. Next. If for whatever reason, like I said before, you started playing before Netmarble introduced login rewards, which include Doctor Strange cards, I also included two other cards that you can use as a replacement for Doctor Strange cards. And likewise, they give you red stats, which are fixed. You cannot change them. You should always go for the blue stats. So for in the Punisher card, you should always go for the cooldown and all attack on the second and fourth blue star and or option and on the nebula card you should always go for all attack on the first and cooldown on the second for the rest of the stats or the green stats are optional and, all, and if you get them that's cool if you don't that's fine you should always aim for the blue stats first your combined stats would look like this so you would get same amount of all attack you would get slightly higher ignore defense slightly lower cooldown you're going to get some max hp and some attack speed which is really good your crit damage is going to be like five percent higher crit rate is going to be the same energy attack is going to be the same physical attack is going to be a bit lower all defense will stay the same and you're losing all attack proc but keeping the physical attack proc so while you will lose three percent peers you do get some additional crit damage, some attack speed, some max HP, and some, well, bonus ignore defense. So while this set is worse than if you have both Doctor Strange cards, it's still not too shabby. It, trust me, it can easily clear World Boss Legends, as you've seen in my live streams. I managed to clear them with way worse card stats than this. Now, what about premium cards? Well, premium cards is something that you'll get passively either through event tokens or gbr tokens and future pass tokens so you're approximately getting two premium cards every 40 to 50 days so one you get from the event tokens you can buy from event tokens and one you get from 30 days of gbr so 300 tokens and additional 300 tokens from the future pass now i'm going to list you the best premium cards you should go for so Overall, the two best cards are Luna card and Guardians of the Galaxy card. And I strongly believe that these cards should be a part of any set that you have. Luna Snow card is the only card in the game which gives you 11% or high roll energy attack and all, ba and all basic attacks increase. So it is must have for any PvE set and is also really good if you're going for a PvP set and is also a must have if you're going for a hybrid set. While the Guardians of the Galaxy card is more of a hybrid card because it also gives you all basic attacks as a fixed stat and it gives you max HP as a fixed stat on a high roll, so 10 or 11% if you go for 6 or 7 quality. So these two cards, if you get them, slot them in pretty much any set you, you 
try, are trying to build and you will have zero regrets. Now for the PV cards, these six cards are the ones you should go for. Now the last two, Ghost Rider card and the new Avengers card are kind of premium cards and you can only get them by gambling. But do not worry, if you cannot get them by gambling crystals, you can always go for these four cards, so either White Fox card, Black Panther card, Amazing Spider-Man card, or the Cable card, or the Civil War card. These cards all give you all basic attacks increase, and most of them give you either cooldown reduction or ignore defense, some give you attack speed, some give you additional crit damage, so they all have the stats you want for the PvE. If you want to go for the PvP card set, you should go for these four cards. The new Avengers card, the Crescent card, the Scarlet Witch card, and the Black Widow card. And now, how can you know which cards to slot when? Now, this is really simple, and trust me, any combination of these cards that you pick and put them in your final five card set, you will have an amazing set. Now, obviously, if you want to go for a PV set, you should always try to slot in Luna card and then four cards from the... P uh, the rest four cards will be from the PV card set. And if you want to go for the PVP set, you want to slot all, five, all four cards from the bottom row, the PvP cards, and then slot in the Guardians of the Galaxy card. If you want to go for a hybrid set, you can equip like Luna card, then Guardians of the Galaxy card, which are two overall best cards. Then you can equip something like a Black Panther card and Cable card, and then for a final card, you can equip the New Avengers card, and you'll have an amazing hybrid set. So it's up to you to freely mix and match these premium cards to if depending on what you want your account to be geared for obviously if you want it for pvp you'll want to equip as many pvp cards as possible because they give you the highest amount of all basic defenses and max hp and if you want uh, your account to be geared towards pve you want to give, slot as many pv cards as possible while also putting in any set the two overall best cards, which are the Luna card and Guardians of the Galaxy card, because stats on those two cards, especially Luna card, are absolutely absurd. And for the third one, if you want hybrid set, then mix and match two overall best cards with two cards from the PvP set, or one card from the PvP set, and two cards from the PvE set. It's up to you and you cannot make a mistake by slotting any of these cards. If the premium card that you got is not on this list, my humble suggestion is for you to save it and use it to re-roll your cards when doing a craft combine. Now, if we go back to the our original card set, which card should you replace first? Well, my idea here is to First, replace the cards that have the worst big stats. So those are obviously first the Star-Lord card, which has fixed crit rate and ignore defense. And once you get the first premium card, for example, Luna card, you want to replace that card first and keep the Loki card, which has all attacks and cooldown. Also keep the two Doctor Strange cards, which have Pierce as a fixed stat. For the second card, obviously, you want to replace the Groot card with... I'm just slotting random premium cards right now, but you get the idea. Any of those cards that I listed, you can easily replace them, those two cards, and then move on and replace the Loki card with the third premium card you get before finally replacing the two last Doctor Strange cards with the final two cards you get. And this set that I showcased is a decent hybrid set that you can use for your PV and PVP gameplay. Finally, I want to talk about card crafting because people often ask me which cards they should go for when finally starting to craft their first premium cards. So if we take a look at the premium card, you always want to go for as many blue stats as possible, because blue stars as possible, because those stats, when you get three of them, you get 2% extra pierce, and if you get all six 
stars at blue, you get 5% additional peers times five cards that goes up to 25% peers. But going for blue stars isn't the only important thing. You should also try to lock the blue stars which have good stats on it. So on the first star, you always want to go for either dodge or crowd control time. These two are the best stats you sh can go for when you get the blue star. And if you get the blue star that has any of these two stats, you should lock it and almost never change it. In the second one, you always want to go for max HP. Max HP is definitely the best stat here. And even if you have zero max HP from the rest of your uncrafted card stats, and if you're all max HP on all of your cards, you're looking at 50 or over 50% max HP from zero by just rolling max HP on this, which really helps you in both PvE and PvP especially. In the third one, you always want to go for either ignore defense until you reach the cap, so until you're, you reach around 36 or 40 ignore defense on your cards, and if your ignore defense is capped, the best things to go here is crowd control time, so you get less CC'd by bosses and in PvP. In the fourth star option, you always want to go for either all defense, if you're more into the PvP side, or critical damage if you are more into the PvE gameplay, or you can mix and match and roll all basic defenses, let's say on three cards, and then critical damage on two cards. For the fifth stat, you always want to go for either cooldown, and this is the same as ignore defense on the third stat, you always want to go for a cooldown until you reach the cap, Ideally, you want 36% and then every single of your characters will be capped because you get that 14% bonus from your alliance. But if you have your cooldown capped, you should go for attack speed until you reach around 20 or 25 attack speed. And if you also have attack speed capped, then you can go for crit rate. But even if you first roll crit rate, it's really okay to keep it and not re-roll it to try to get attack speed or cooldown unless you really need it and the sixth star is one of the best stars because you can there you can roll for an all attack but and this is, would be optimal because it buffs both your physical attackers and your energy attack characters but if you cannot roll blue all attack because trust me it takes a lot of rerolls to get a card that has all these stats on blue star quality or blue color, you can opt in and lock the blue stars once you either roll energy attack and physical attack. If your blues, if you haven't rolled any of these stats but you got blue star, you can opt in to lock it, but so you save that pierce. But trust me, in the long run, that will end up costing you more than just re-rolling your card and going for the right stats on the blue color. So I hope this video took me a lot of time, like a lot of time to make with all these images and the guide. And I hope that this video clarifies what should new players do with comic cards, what stats to go for. And I hope that it even helps intermediate players who are still confused about which card to equip where. So I really hope it helps you guys and girls. And yeah, if you enjoyed the video or have any comments about it, hit me up in the comments down below. Consider leaving a like or even subscribing and I'll see you guys next time. Take care.